So if you're looking to own an event venue, then you're in the right place. On this channel, we discuss all things event venue ownership, policies, procedures, zoning, and how to operate a sustainable and successful event venue. So today we're going to be talking about outdoor spaces. This is the third series in a three-part series where I will explain to you my experiences, the pros and cons of owning an outdoor event space. So let's get right to it. So, you want to know what is an outdoor space. An outdoor space are things like gardens, beaches, parks, sporting arenas, uh, rooftops, um, and things of that nature. You can utilize a space that, you know, in your backyard if zoning permits it. So I actually owned and operated a outdoor garden, which we could accommodate up to 150 guests. Um, the space was very versatile. I loved it because it was beautiful, it was serene. We were able to host a conglomerate of different events there, such as weddings, corporate events. We also had events like Picnic uh, Under the Stars, Art After Dark, and a lot of other different events. We also hosted uh, Senior Citizens once a month where we work with other caterers and vendors to come in and provide a free breakfast for senior citizens and allow them the opportunity to network and enjoy our beautiful and lush gardens. We also once a month hosted young children whose parents were incarcerated. They would come in and have arts and crafts, also be able to write, make cards and write letters to their parents. So we also gave back to the community but it was you asked is it cost effective for us it was a little bit on the high end to operate and maintain only because we had lush gardens we had tropical plants we had koi ponds and we also had several different spaces within our um, inside the gardens we had a space with had a kitchenette we also had a bridal suite and we also had a room that would accommodate up to 30 participants for any small meetings. Our, our space was lush, beautiful. We had stages, we had water features. We could host just about any type of event as long as the capacity stayed uh, under 150. Uh, we provided unique experiences. As I said, we had like the, um, the different uh, events after dark, you know, we hosted events for artists to come in, bands, jazz, jazz bands, and you know, solo artists and things like that. So. It was very flexible and unique. So in saying that, I loved it. Like I said, the upkeep was a little on the high end for us only because we did have so many plants and um, different little vignettes within the gardens that we had to maintain. But normally, you know, depending on what type of uh, event space you have, rooftops, you know, you really don't need much maintenance there except if you're going to the cleaning, the maintenance of the, the outdoor space and, and things like that. But like I said, ours, uh, uh, had very high-end florals and so it, it did we did have to maintain it quite a bit so the cons there's always the downside to anything right the weather the weather could be a beast I mean we would have events scheduled and maybe it would rain so we always had to have a backup plan for rain because in Florida you know it may rain in the morning and may not rain in the afternoon so um, we might have we may have had to push it to later in the day or to reset schedule it just depends on you know the type of event but having tents and backup plan ABC plan you know is always great when you have an outdoor space some like I said are high cost to maintenance you know with the furniture and you know things like that can be um, quite costly but it's just it's not as costly as having an indoor event space also there are noise restrictions you may not know zoning will tell you you know the quiet hours or you know you need to learn about the uh, the music the desk uh, that music can be played in, especially if you're in a neighborhood or, or a community, you know, so be cognizant and, and make sure you educate yourself on that. Also, there are some events that you might have to have a permit. You may have, a, if you're going to serve liquor and you don't have liquor uh, permit, then you have to get a special uh, permit for that. And so you do need permits, you know, um, in Florida, we, we didn't, we weren't allowed to uh, serve liquor, but three times a year, there was a permit that we could purchase and be able to um, sell liquor. 
So also make sure you have the proper amenities. You know, sometimes outdoor spaces allows you to have limited uh, amenities. I mean, we were blessed because like I said, we had the three different spaces that we had the kitchen, we had bathrooms, and sometimes in the outdoor spaces, bathrooms can be a problem. So you gotta think, are you gonna have the luxury porter potties? Um, do you have the expenses to build, you know, restrooms outside for guests? Or uh, how are you going to maneuver that? Also. For instance, uh, for catering, how are you going to manage the amenities for your catering? Do you have a space? Are you going to have food trucks? You know, you need to consider all that before actually getting into deciding if you want to have a outdoor space. Overall, owning an outdoor space for me was great. I loved it because it allowed us to do so much, but you know, you must consider the pros and cons when you are considering an outdoor space. So, to wrap it all up, the three-part series, which one did I like owning better? I would say the outdoor space, then the intimate space, and thirdly would be the larger event space, only because it was just so uh, expensive. The, the overhead expenses was just outrageous. Uh, but then again, that was a 10,000 square foot uh, venue. So if you're considering owning a venue, please educate yourself on all the pros and cons of each type of venue, whether it's an outdoor space, intimate space, or a large event space. You must know, you know what the overhead costs are gonna be, uh, what the zoning and the permitting rules are before uh, moving ahead. So if you like this uh, video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna stay in the know, please subscribe. <laughs> I'm gonna go